Hello, I'm in Lisbon, Portugal for the launch of Specialized's new bay. It's not a complete overhaul for the endurance platform, more of an evolution, but there's still lots of interesting details and improvements to run through. First, let's talk Future Shock. The understem suspension is perhaps the defining characteristic of a Roubaix platform. Previously, the top end models came with a lockout function and the ability to change spring weights to better suit riders of different weights. Now, you can switch through six different levels of suspension by turning the knob to lock out the Future Shock, which allows for a bit more of on the fly adjustment. You can now also use preload spaces to fine tune the suspension if you happen to land between one of the three spring weights. At the rear, the dropped seat post clamp and the amount of flex which that gives you is essentially unchanged from the previous model. Essentially, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But what's really nice to see is that if you bought a lower end model with a lower end future shock, it's now possible to upgrade the future shock to the higher end model with the greater functionality which that offers. Even better, the new future shocks are retrofitable to previous Roubaix models as well. Now let's talk weights. The Future Shock weighs a fairly hefty 400 grams and a size 56 frame set painted comes in at 828 grams and so that's a pretty light frame but still quite a lot of weight coming from the Future Shock itself. Still, you can build the Roubaix light if you have pockets deep enough. A SRAM red equipped Roubaix with carbon roval wheels tips the scales at about 7.3 kilos which isn't bad. Tire clearance is up now too, you can now fit a 40mm tire into the frame set. There was a time when a bike like that would be called a gravel bike, but Specialized doesn't want to confuse things with their gravel line and so the Roubaix is being called a road bike despite its capabilities off-road. And finally, it's sporting a few more mounts, there's bosses underneath the down tube and also a set for fenders. The top tube bosses are particularly important as it turns out that if you strap a top tube bag around the Future Shock, that impacts the weather sealing. And so bolting the top tube bag in place and not using the strap is very much advised. And so what's it like to ride? Well so far I've only been out for a 60km spin, but in that I've enjoyed the handling, especially with the chunky tyres. It's a nice combination for carving around the corners with a lot of confidence. It absolutely pelted it down with rain on the ride, and so yeah, that extra grip was really very much appreciated. I think that the spring weight at the front is a little heavy for me. It felt more just like added compliance and flex rather than like actual suspension. It's quite a contrast to the last Future Shock I rode, which was really very springy indeed. So I'm very much looking forward to taking it out for another ride, with a different tune on the shock and maybe taking in some more gravel excursions too. I'll let you know how I get on once I've spent some more time on the bike.